I shall not even try to do an accurate impression of Mr. George Galloway, because as far as I am concerned, he is posh Scottish, or at least he would like to be. He is a person entirely motivated by his own status, by his own wealth, by wanting to perhaps to live in Morningside, in the nicest part of Edinburgh. But for whatever reason, he was born in Dundee, and he has come up with a strategy which has allowed him to gain status, to gain wealth, to become, as it were, posh Scottish, while making people believe that in reality he is a man of the people, he is a member of Parliament for the Workers' Party. So what I want to do today is understand the psychology of Mr George Galloway and to understand uh, how it is that he has uh, risen to such uh, really quite admirable heights. Before I do that, if you are new to the channel, please, please, please subscribe. It helps us violently if you do that. Subscribe here on YouTube. And most importantly, subscribe on my Substack, thejollyheretic.com, where I can where I put all the spiciest content, you know, the in-person interviews, vlogs, stuff that I dare not put on YouTube. You can support me over there if you like what I do uh, for as little as the cost of a pint of beer a month. So please subscribe at thejollyheretic.com. Right, today I want to talk about the psychology of George Galloway, uh, <clears throat> who has just won a by-election in the UK in the seat of Rochdale, and he, which is in Greater Manchester, Lancashire, and he has wiped the floor with with his opponents, and his the main um, plank on which he stood was Gaza. There is a large Muslim population in Rochdale, and he stood on that on that platform of being complete of, of wanting to stop the war in Gaza, of anti-Israel, of pro-Gaza, and so forth. He has stood many times on a pro-Muslim ticket, despite the fact that he is a white uh, Scottish elderly man and and he has won and he has won overwhelmingly now what i want to understand is the kind of person george galloway is george galloway is a person who identifies very strongly to the extent that it gets him in trouble that's the thing that's admirable about him to the extent that it gets him in trouble with members of another ethnic group than his own and fights for their interests to some extent over the interests of his own ethnic group now why would he do that it gets back to a fundamental difference uh, in human evolution. We are a group-oriented species. We are a pack animal. But yet, in order to pass on our genes, particularly if we are male, we have to get to the top of the pack because females sexually select for status in males. They do this because uh, males who have status will have more resources that they will be able to invest in them uh, and in their offspring, meaning that they and their offspring will be more likely to survive. And also because the fact that the man has managed to attain status means that he is adapted to his ecology, um, which means that he has good genes and he is more likely to survive. So women sexually select for status. Therefore, you must attain individual status. But for the group to survive, the group must also be highly internally cooperative, it must be hostile to foreigners, um, it must work together, and so therefore you also have to be optimally group-oriented. So we have these two sets of moral foundations, being group-oriented, where we are interested in in-group loyalty, where we are interested in obedience to authority, and where we are interested in sanctity um, versus disgust, because what this often involves is sanctifying as good behaviour which keeps bad things out of the group, and rendering disgusting behaviour which um, is bad for the group. We have group-oriented foundations and we have individually-oriented foundations. That is to say, being concerned with equality, which means that you get as much as everybody else, and being concerned with harm avoidance, which ultimately means that you, as an individual, don't get harmed. Now, the evidence indicates that people that are right-wing are approximately equally concerned with all five moral foundations, whereas people that are left-wing are not particularly concerned with the group-oriented foundations. They are concerned with the individually-oriented foundations of equality and of harm avoidance. Now, these um, foundations allow a person who is of low status 
to get to the top of the group. So it makes sense if you are of low status to be concerned with those foundations. How is this so? Well, um, if you are of low status, then you dare not uh, challenge the, the, the higher males in a fair fight because you are likely to be killed. You are of low status because you are physically weak. You are of low status because you are not particularly socially skilled. You are of low status because you do not have intrinsically what it takes to become of high status. Um, <clears throat> so what you have to do is you have to play for status covertly. You play the status covertly by signalling your interest in equality by saying everyone should be equal and harm avoidance by going on about how terrible it is that people are being harmed, i.e. you virtue signal. You covertly play for status. Now this is exactly what left-wing people do. Left-wing people use those two moral foundations to covertly play for status. They don't really care about them. Um, the, as I said, the evidence indicates that left-wing people are individualists. Uh, left-wing people are not group oriented, they're not pro-social, they're not very nice people compared to conservatives. On average, left-wing people are lower in agreeableness, that means they're less altruistic and they're less selfless, basically. They're lower in conscientiousness, they're less rule-following, uh, and they are lower in mental stability, i.e. they are higher in neuroticism, they feel negative feelings strongly, they are mentally unstable. Now, of course, what this is why they end up at the bottom of the group. Now, of course, what this means um, is that they fear a fair fight. They are paranoid. Uh, also, on average, left-wing people are physically, uh, men, I mean, are physically weaker, they are shorter, um, and they are simply less good-looking. Now, there are various reasons for that that I've looked at in other videos, but what that means is that they're, they're at the bottom of the group. So how can you play for status if you're a person like that, if you're ugly and short and weak and mentally unstable and scared? You play for status by signalling, by virtue signalling. That is how you, you play for status. And so you then get, make your way to the top of the group. Now, another thing you can do if you are individually oriented, like these people, is you, could, yeah, you, you, if you, you can get status via basically treason via collaborating with foreigners, with outsiders, in order to take power over your own group. And this is exactly the strategy which George Galloway has followed. So um, there's a, a study by Waits et al, W A. TZ, where he shows that the, that the moral circle of right-wing people and left-wing people is noticeably different. Right-wing people identify themselves first, then their family, then their, um, uh, their kin, then their ethnic group, then their race, in a series of concentric circles that emanate outwards from self, i.e. In, in their genetic interests. That makes sense in evolutionary terms. The leftist does something rather different. He, his level of, of moral circle identification is more genetic removed from self, i.e. he will identify with a foreign group over his own group, and even with another species over his own species. So this identification with a foreign group, other than that which is genetically close to him, allows him to bond with that group, to collaborate with that group, and to attain status over his own in-group via collaboration with outsiders. So that's one of the methods that they use. So now we are starting to see the strategy that is employed by George Galloway, um, who constantly represents the interests of Muslims and other for and foreigners and whatever uh, in the UK. Ultimately, what this comes down to, what this can all be reduced to, is differences in life history strategy. Um, we are all on a spectrum from fast, a fast strategy, where we are in an unstable yet easy ecology. This means we could be wiped out at any moment, so we live fast and die young. Um, uh, in that ecology, you know, it, 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 it's fast. You live fast, die young. You have to pass on your genes as quickly as possible. There's no point bonding with people because because the the, the bond may never be paid back. Um, it, you're, you're just about you. Um, th because the ecology is unstable, you may as well be attracted to foreigners because they could have some some uh, some gene that could possibly be of use to you. Uh, but there's nothing to lose. To a slow strategy where the, where we, the carrying capacity for the species is reached, therefore it's highly competitive 
to survive, and therefore you live slow and die old. Life slows down, you have to take energy away from sex and put it in investment, because if you, in, if you don't invest in your offspring, if you, don't, if you don't nurture them, then they could all just die. So you have a small number of offspring with a small number of people, you bond more strongly with them, um, the, life slows down so that there can be a childhood in which you learn about the environment so that you can optimally compete, um, and, and, and you bond strongly with your offspring and you bond strongly with your wife, and, and, and also you tend to select actually for genetic similarity, because if you don't do that, then the, um, the gene complexes which render you adapted to the very specific and harsh environment that you're in could break up and then you're not adapted to the environment and so you die. And also if you don't select for genetic similarity, then you will be less related to your child and, and less related to your wife and therefore you will bond less strongly with them and therefore you will nurture them less and therefore they will be less likely to survive. So therefore you get this fundamental, um, this fundamental difference between a, a, a fast ecology which selects in favour of individualism and just looking after yourself and a slow ecology which selects in favour of being, uh, of basically being group oriented, of basically being right wing as opposed to being uh, left wing. Uh, that's the fundamental difference. Remember that what if you are if you are in a more com a, a, a slow ecology, a harsher ecology, you have to be higher in agreeableness. You have to be, to get on with people in, in groups. You have to be higher in conscientiousness, follow the rules. You have to be more mentally stable, more like a conservative. If you're in the if you're in the uh, fast ecology, those things don't matter. If anything, you have to be impulsive and you have to be aggressive and whatever in order to survive. So we can start, and also there's less selection pressure, and so there's less selection pressure against people being, you know, mentally ill and short and ugly and, 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 and ugly. And, and are you ready for the future of the West? <laughs>